everybody. How you guys doing? Welcome to a totally random live stream. Wow, I'm overexposed. <laughs> okay, hold on. That's the thing when you are doing your own uh, camera preset. It doesn't come out the way that you want it to be. And you have to excuse me. I, I look... I know I have white skin, but now... I mean... Yeah. Hold on. Just give me a sec. Just gonna turn that down a little bit. So at least I don't look flat white. <laughs> there we go. Random live stream. This is what you get. Welcome everybody. Today I want to do a long overdue request. Many, many people asked me to build a show from scratch. And today this is what we're going to do. It's currently 8 at night. I have a filming tomorrow. So uh, I'm bringing the wing with me. This is how I'm going to record the live sound for six TV show in a row. We're going to do six TV show of an hour in three days. So one day of setup, one show. After that, two show, two show, and a single last show uh, on Sunday. So I'm going to be pretty much busy the rest of the week. Around 12 hours a day, just to give you an idea. Because, uh, yeah, uh, an hour of filming of TV is more than uh, an hour in real life. Even if this is going to be like a real life performance with rehearsal, setup time, sound check, uh, it's about a half a day so expect four to five hour with uh with everything considered to make a, a full hour of live tv so my job on the show will be only to mix the band live and to record a multi-track let me explain i'm gonna record from the sd card in the wing I want to try to limit myself to 8-track, so a stereo drum, probably separate guitars, a bass, I have a violin player on that gig, because this is a, a, a country music gig, American country music gig, and I need to have vocals separately. So I'm going to record all of them dry, absolutely no effect on these track. I'm going to use bus and i'm going to use user signal to achieve the result of have everything pretty much process all i'm going to do after the fact in post-production is remix everything volume wise but the tone should be there crossing my finger this is a no way back we'll see what happened but uh today the goal is not to really uh set that up the goal is to start the show from scratch. I have a a bit of a scene that I could reuse here, but you you guys wanted to go full on from scratch, full band. This is what I'm going to do. So drum, bass, guitar, a couple acoustic guitar and guest uh, singers, violin, one to three lead singer at the same time. Everybody's going to run in here. I'm going to do setup for uh, the bus for in ear. Full on show. Without further ado, let's switch to the screen and we're going to start. I just reset the console, so everything is really from scratch. The only thing that I didn't do is my effect rack, even though I'm not going to use most of the stuff here. And uh, I just kept my custom control so I can switch the camera and everything. I'm not going to use that during the show, of course. But for me to build this here, I need to switch camera and answer uh, and, you know, take the music down if I want to. Okay. Let's start with the most important input of a mix. Just kidding. The bass drum. A bass drum. Okay, the reason that I'm saying that, joke aside, is 
Many people tend to mix with too much, too much bass drum, too much low end, and the mix is not only a bass drum and a lead vocal. Uh, especially on TV, because what I'm going to build today, I'm probably going to give the show out also to be downloaded under the video. If, I, uh, if you guys want to have it, let me know. I will put it down below. Um, Sorry, notification on my pad. Um, I'm going to put the show down below if you guys want to have it. But uh, it's going to be an hybrid. It's not going to be like a real live show. It's going to be more uh, focused on TV slash studio setup. So everything will be less dynamic that I would do for a real live show. Everything will be more compressed just to fit, you know, into small speaker you have to think about the people that are going to listen to your mix into a phone, even if it's not the best way to listen to music. Uh, some people are going to listen to it into a phone, and you have to make sure that at least it's not destroying their phone speakers. So this is what I'm going to try to aim for today, a really well-balanced compressed mix from the channel strip and then at the master, I'm going to apply some limiter, uh, compression and limiter to make it really tight and not that dynamic, just so it's going to fit into most uh, speakers outside of a big live PA. With that, uh, the first thing I could do is my input list. So we're gonna we gotta change the pace here. I was thinking about just building every input, but no, the wing doesn't work that way. Uh, it's easier if you build your patch list first. So this is what we're gonna do. Um, absolutely nothing in my channel. Uh, absolutely nothing in my alternate channel. Good. Just double checking some stuff here. And I think we're gonna start with uh with that so okay source all my source gonna come from as 50 a i'm gonna have my dl 256 on the stage usually i use it with my x32 core but this time i'm just gonna use uh the as a from the two dl 256 come into that console and i will take care of everything from here not do a split thing with the x32 core this is going to be just full on wing so my uh, my first input here is kick why do i have some stuff hold on uh can i reset no just because i don't want to lose you guy i don't want to lose the sound coming out of the uh sound, sound coming, coming out of the the console usb i'm just gonna repatch everything but by default you should not have anything here i'm gonna write kick this is gonna be my first input for real after that we're gonna have a snare top it's not gonna be a high at i want to have a snare bottom i uh, do i want a hat probably not it's gonna be a first tom floor tom just one of them uh, six, is, is it going to be a bass? Can I pair my stereo input? Probably not, so because I'm not short on input on that gig, I'm just going to leave it empty. Overhead, going to be a stereo pair here, overhead. And this is where we start to have fun. This is not going to be a stereo guitar. And these won't be vocal. So, okay, here. Uh, input nine... Do I leave? Uh, I'm going to take a ride. I like to have a ride mic just for some uh, some part of the song. I like to have it and put a little bit of the ride bell in the mix. So I'm going to keep it. This is definitely not going to be guitar. My input 10 is going to be my bass. Just a single bass DI. Should I say bass DI? Let's say bass DI on it. Base DI. Input 11 is not going to be guitar. Uh, it's not going to be a vocal. It's going to be guitar. Can I do 11 and 12 as a stereo input? Yes, I can. This is going to be guitar. 
Alex. Uh, that's going to be uh, Oxbox. There we go. Oxbox. After that, 11 and... Uh, okay. I'm going to get some stuff ready just in case. So maybe my friend Alex will have an acoustic guitar. So I'm going to guess. Here. Alex. Acoustic. What do I have next? I'm trying to think. I don't have anything written down for that show. I just go from the top of my head of doing the band a couple times before and just go like, whatever. Whatever is going to happen. Mm. Bass DI. Alex Guitar. Alex Acoustic. 14 is going to be empty. I will leave some space in the patch just to give me a chance to add some stuff if I ever need it. After that, I will have violin one. Violin two from the great violin player that I have in that gig. Uh, she's called Judy. She's really good. Uh, and she's going to bring two violin. One uh, acoustic one with a preamp or a piezo. Uh, not a piezo pickup. Yeah, is that a piezo? I think it's a piezo pickup. And she's got an electric violin just for out there tuning and whatever. It's uh, It doesn't sound the same, so I cannot just swap the violin from the preamp. Uh, we need. I need to run two, uh, two lines for this. After that, what do we have? Hmm. Should I start with vocal? Hold on. Let, I'm going to do my research here and I'm going to start my patch. Look at a patch that I've sent before. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let's see what I usually have. I have a copy of the real patch that I'm using most of the time. Uh, the real patch that I'm using, or the, the way I built the show on X32, was a kick in, snare top, snare bottom, I hat, I'm not gonna use a hat, tom floor, overheads, bass, an acoustic guitar, electric guitar, two violin, vocal. Okay, I'm already in the vocal. Let's do that then. I'm going to prepare just in case some back vocal. So it's going to be vocal. I'm going to go in visual order. So that's only good for me. Vocal Alex. Vocal Julie. Vocal Donald. Vocal. P.O. It's my drummer. I think I have uh, a guest vocal. I have a couple guest vocalists, but I may have somebody who's going to be back vocal. So I don't know for sure. And I don't know the name of the lady is going to come if she's there. So I'm just going to call her her back vocal for now. At least I know what it is. Um, do I want to start with that and leave some empty channel here? Maybe. Okay. For musician and back vocal, I'm going to leave. Oh, maybe I could go with the lead singer. Uh, she's going to be very Veronic. After that, I'm going to try guest. It's going to be four guests. 
one. Two. Are we four already? Guess one, two, three, four. This is where they're going to be preset. After that, I have some guest um, instrument. So, G. One I and S for instrument that will be that's probably going to change, but it will be 57. It will uh, 57 for guitar, some acoustic guitar, DI, a, a bunch of other stuff that I just don't know. So I'm just gonna get some line ready for that. I'm probably not gonna do a lot of EQ or nothing in there just because that's going to change at every show because sometimes i will have three guests at the same time some of them will play guitar some don't who knows i still don't know so i'm just going to prepare them basically like i would do on a festival patch when I say building something as a festival patch is you you always put too much stuff on your console and not use it all at the same time. But you can preset some stuff and you can keep your vocal, back vocal, guitar always there and ready. You know, changing a guitar amp for a guitar amp is most of the time the same thing on a console. So... This is what I'm trying to build here. So all my other guests will be here. Those will probably be my local input because, um, yeah, that may change. Maybe those will be AS50 or local. Right now I'm building the AS50 patch, but, uh, oh man, are they gonna be local? I think I'm going to have the wireless next to me. So yeah, those, uh, I j actually, this will be the right order of the patch, but uh, those will be, those won't be used because I will have the wireless next to me and I will just patch in the console. Hi, Craig. Uh, no band tracks. Nope. This is going to be live. Should be mostly live. No band track. Uh, try to think, do I miss anything? I don't think so. It's still a small, small setup that I'm building. Uh, okay, just in case I want to get my stuff ready, I'm going to assign my local input. Yeah, this is, this is definitely weird. Uh, I'm going to take 48 volt out of these and I'm going to assign my local, my f seven input here as seven wireless so the first four will be g1 vocal g2 vocal for g stands for guess number and vx stand for vocal great next we have g one. Oh no. Hey, what's going on? Instrument. Instrument again. And G three. I don't know how to write. There you go. Why seven? You may ask. Uh, because this is all the all the wireless that I have. I only have seven wireless, and I'm gonna prepare a physical DI plug up front for somebody who wants to plug in 
just in case with a wire. We know a good old quarter jack into a DI that work. So I will do that. But n at least now I know, or yeah, I know that my wireless will be next to me on the on my table next to me with seven line going in the back of the console into the XLR, not the quarter inch. If I wanted them to be quarter inch, I would use the aux in. I want to go XLR in the back, and that's going to be good to go. Uh, okay, now that I have decided or I name my source, and I created most of my uh, stereo source, if needed, let me just double check that. I have my overhead, I have my guitar that is gonna be stereo, some MT input, but yeah, this is all the stereo input that I have. I don't have much uh, stereo there. No keyboard in that gig, other than just a, a, a good uh, Oxbox stereo. Everything else is just mono. Okay, well, huh. Sorry, as I'm I'm still debating if I should put a hi-hat. Okay, let's put a, a hi-hat on, if needed. So I'm going to move my tom here. I'm going to put a hi-hat. Uh, where is the hi-hat? This is going to be my tom. And this is going to be my floor tom. There we go. Now I have eight input of drum, eight preamp of drum. It's going to be seven channel compressed down. And it's now time to assign them to channel. Let's move on to channel. I'm going to go on main, unlock the patch, and we're going to start with the plus one magic here assign, to assign channels. So kick, snare, snare and bottom, hot tom, floor, overhead, stereo overhead. It's an orange-ish. Ride, my bad. We're gonna have eight channel drum, bass DI, electric guitar, acoustic Alex, <laughs> and oh no, my violins not, are not going to be on the same uh, layer. Okay, whatever. Violin in 13. Violin 2. And I'm going to need to change the name on that because it doesn't... I don't know how to spell violin anyway, so... Okay, hold on. Let's go back to source here v1 v2 there we go names are just there so i know what it is it doesn't matter what it says um okay moving on to channel 14 I'm gonna go output uh sorry channel we have v1 v2 do I just leave that page empty and hmm. no, I can fit everything on the last because I'm looking at the physical fader that I have in front of me. Uh, I'm just gonna put everything the way it come and I'm probably going to be under 24 uh, channel more than 24 source, but 24 channel. It's always it's it's always a brain fart for me to understand that, but uh, that's the new way apparently. Channel and input doesn't mean the same thing anymore. Um, what was I? Okay, back vocal. This one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. I can now have my lead singer. I'm going to leave 20 empty. And I'm going to patch my guest vocal up into 21. So to have my guest vocal up in 21, I need to change from 
AES, go to local and go here, 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 and here. And my guess instrument will be on 25 and on. So here, here, and here. And the last one will be from ASA, uh, AS50 port A. And I'm going to use channel 32 because it says guest 4 on it. But it will tell me. I don't, actually, you can't see the console. Uh, by the way, I have that camera coming soon. Bought the cable for it. I just need to run it in the roof. But so far, this is what we got. I think we covered pretty much all the all the source that I will have. Now before I start to pre-EQ and add some compressor of choice or pick the EQ that I want and the compressor that I want to use on this channel, I think we should take a look at the bus. If I go here, view, here's the bus. Um, I should just name them and get my stuff ready. So how do I want to build my boss? Should I, do I want to go visual? Let's go visual. So it's going to be Alex, my guitar player. After that, we're going to have, I'm going to go with the band first. Julie, she's playing violin. Donald on bass, Pio on drum. After that, I have Vigo, who's the lead singer. Love the content, mate. I'll watch after work. Hey, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Folder40, for joining in. Hope you enjoy watching this in playback, because it's probably late for you. Thank you very much for being here. Glad you like it. Fun is coming. Uh, actually, hold on. I did something wrong here. My number five is going to be my back vocal. The lovely lady who's going to do back vocal. I don't know her name, so I'm going to call her back vocal for now. After that, I have Vigil. And do I want to keep my guest on a uh, second page? I think I will. I'm going to start guest at 9. I'm going to leave two empty bus for whatever. It's going to be G1. Um, let me think about it. I have four wireless in here in my rack. Everything else will be wired. So do I want to keep them together? I think I will. So, the lovely lady who's going to do back vocal tomorrow is going to have one of them. I think I'm going to put Vego, the lead singer, at the end. So, it's going to be back vocal. Guess one. Guess one. Guess two. Oh, no, I want to do space here. Guess two. It's going to put, because on the, uh, the channel strip itself, it puts guest and the number under it. So it make it cleaner. Uh, and then the last one. Guess three. Now I need to go into bus nine. And that's going to be Vego. And she's probably going to be local. Hmm. I'm going to need so much stuff tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, because once we're done here, I need to pack everything. I need to pack the DL251, check all the cablings, and I need to 
uh, uh, I need to, to bring the console with me. So the wing is going to leave the basement. It's going to go in the back of the car. That's going to be a tight fit for a smart car. A smart car. I'll try to take a picture and do a post <laughs> on YouTube for that. Uh, from Mike, can I patch stereo channel to different stage box? Uh, for example, left audience uh, to ASA, right to AS50B. That's a really good question. You know what? Give me a sec here. I think we're done with the bus. Well, at least for the inner monitor. I'm going to close that down and we'll take a look at this. But this is a really legit question. This is something that I would try to do. You know, having one stage box on one side, one on the other. Let's see if we can do that. Let's use, just for fun, 33. And I'm going to use channel 48. And I'm going to try here, channel... Uh, no, I need to build a source. Hold on. Really legit question, man. If I'm selecting a stereo channel, hmm. Okay, hold on. Let's go none here. Let's go into source. Source will allow you to pair channel next to each other. But not... Okay, hold on. Maybe there's a workaround. In user signal, can you do something like that? User signal will be an output only. Nope. Channel, nope. Okay, hold on. Maybe if I go on the channel itself. Uh, channel 36. Um, no, Mike, the answer, the answer is, uh, I believe they can only be paired within the same AS50 cable left to right, um, even to odd numbers. So that will be a no. I don't think you can really legit question. Uh, the easy option here will be to just to run a cable across the stage. I know we try to avoid that most of the time. This is why uh, this is why your ID makes total sense. But I wonder if there's a workaround. Can I use? Can I use? Hold on. I tried to, to think some, uh, about something with the, the, the um, user signal. Nope. That would not work because the user signal are to take from a channel or a bus and use that somewhere else. Um, I don't think you can. No, this is just to send. This is just to. Yeah. No, you cannot do that. I'm sorry. It doesn't allow you to do it. It's not. When you build a stereo channel, you have to preset the source and you cannot pick like this channel and this channel like you would, let's say, on the Pro 2. Uh, on the Pro 2 or on the Pro Midas, you can pretty much take any input and assign it to anything. But on the wing, they only did the pairing from even to odd number within the same menu, the same sub menu. Uh, alternative input. No, I don't think you can do it uh, through alternative input because you have to build a source. 
It's 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 a source. It's the same thing. It's a source. So you have to build the source first, but the source cannot be left to right. But uh, honestly, I'm gonna request the fe the feature. Maybe not on all channel, but um, let's say on the Ox uh, channel, the 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 forty one to. I will ask if it's possible to have a separate menu on these channel, because let's be honest: if you are doing uh, crowd mic, you don't need to apply a lot of processing. It could it could have two input here. Interesting one. Great question, Mike. Thank you for. Uh, Teaching me something. I like to do these lives so much because I think you guys think so much out of the box from my perspective. Awesome. I like it. Um, what else? I need to, uh, hmm, interesting. When I assign my channel on uh, the console, as you can see here, all the name followed except uh, what I patched from the local input 21, oops, sorry, input 21 to 2024. They changed the channel, they changed the source to local. I can see it on the display, but the name did not follow. I wonder why. Uh, I'm not sure to understand your question, Mike. A link channel. A link channel. You mean like... I'm going to take a break here. You mean like back in the day when you link two channels together to make a stereo? You cannot do that on the wing because every channel, every fader could be mono or stereo it's uh i don't think you can link to channel i don't believe there's a way to do it yeah ganging uh i don't think there's a way to do it because they they it was not in the top process of building the console that way because channel can be stereo So, yeah, it doesn't work like that. Yeah, I'm really sorry. It, it's not... I see where you're going with this, but it's... No, it's not built that way. The The, the top process behind the, uh, the wing did not require them to do channel being put together because... They said everything is stereo or mono. You don't need to. You don't need. The console is designed for stereo work. But your stereo source must be uh, within the same menu or sub menu of input. Actually, one next to, to the other and plug physically in one next to the other. Most of the time, in 99% of the time, it will be doable. You just, you know, skip an, an input, just leave an input empty on your channel. But, uh, yeah. Good, good idea. I, I totally see why, I totally see why you want to do this, but, uh, not in this case. It would not work like that. Now I'm pre-setting up gain because one and two were already too high. I'm pre-setting up gain for uh, these channels. I know they're going to be my vocal. And actually, I need to write them down. Uh, it's going to be G1 VX G2 VX G3 VX Oops. Uh, 
uh, and the instrument did follow. This is weird. Only the last channel didn't follow. Okay. Um, I just realized that I forgot something. My guitar player, Alex, is going to have a talk back. I forget. I forgot to put him a talk back. I'm just going to go source. It's going to come from AS50. And can I run... Can I run that from... I'm just going to put it here. In 14. There we go. That's going to be uh, called Talkback. That's going to be called Talkback. That's it. And I'm just going to put it at the end. So it's... What's in 24? Oh. Before I unpatch anything. What's in 24? Nothing. I'm going to go AS50. Talkback. Hey, what's going on here? Now, for some reason, the the name doesn't follow. This is strange. I probably unselect something. I'm just gonna write it down. Oh, link source. There we go. Forgot that. Link customization to source. That will uh, basically apply the name of the channel that will change the name of the channel depending on the source just trying to be clear okay we got that great uh just gonna check my input again kick snare snare top snare bottom high up thumb floor overhead ride base di alex electric guitar alex acoustics First violin, violin two. You guys at least gotta see what I'm looking at. Vocal Alex, vocal Julie, vocal Donald, vocal Pio, back vocal, talk back and talk back. I need to make sure that this is not going anywhere in the main or on the recording whatsoever. Okay. Input 20 is going to be empty. It's going to be uh, an acoustic guitar or whatever is going to pop up or whatever extra that the guy need uh, for tomorrow. Actually, the band is texting me right now and I need to take a little break to answer them. Um, Okay, let's take a quick look again at my bus. Starting from bus one, Alex, Julie, Donald, Pio, that's guitar, violin, bass, and drums, back vocal. After that, uh, I'm going to have Back vocal will be my wireless one, two, three, and four for back vocal guests one, two, and three. And after that, I have my lead singer, Vero, right there. Now that we got that done, I've pretty much built what I need to start working on channel itself. We're going to start working on channel. And as usual, I start with drums. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, gain. That's going to be... I know I know my... Okay. What, the reason why I can build preset is I know two things. I like that... I like to refer to it as an equation. I know pretty much all the number. All I don't know is the answer. I have to guess the answer. But if I know who's my drummer, what drum kit is going to have, 
the microphone that I'm going to use and my preamp, all these are part of the equation, I can pretty much guess the result. And some people said that I'm crazy by doing this, but most of the time it's working. It's really a mathematical uh, step, but most of the time it's working. The number that I'm going to apply on this show file are based of my experience with the microphone and the musician and the console. I know my preamp inside out. I know how they sound. I did hundreds of shows with my DL251. I pretty much know <laughs> how each preamp sound different from one to another. I know that. I know my microphone. I'm using the same microphone. You know, it's the same microphone in the bass drum that follow me for years. I know how that one is sounding. I know what I'm going to use on snare top, snare bottom. It's the same mic that I'm using weekly. So I can approximate some stuff knowing the musician on the other side and what drum or instrument is going to bring. You will see. It, it, it will all make sense once we start going into it. Uh, bass drum, because it's going to be TV-ish gig, I'm going to put a low cut. It's going to default to 100, which is way too high. It's probably going to be more around 45, 50-ish, because I want to have some bass drum but it's not like when I'm doing live show where I want my bass drum to f kick people in the chest and move some hair, some vibration around them. It's not going to happen. So I'm not going to try to aim for that. EQ on. Wing EQ for the drum. Work fine. Gate. I'm going to put a expander. Uh, the default setting on the expander makes sense to me. 3 to 1, let's go 2 to 1, or even 1 1.5. Um, and I'm going to be really, really gentle with the gate, because I will be recording a drum bus only, not a full-on multi-track. So less is more. I have to make it right from the get-go, or I'm just going to fail. EQ, good. Just gonna leave it like that for now. I know I'm gonna push probably something around here in 200 for the snare, maybe 400 down. Usually it's the double, you know, uh, it's the harmonic. If I turn down or if I turn up, maybe um, let's say 220, I'm probably gonna turn down 440. It's just a nature of the beast. It's the way the harmonics are working together. I'm going to find the note of the drum by looking at the RTA and see where the peak is. I'm going to take a look at that and I'm going to see that there's a second peak usually at the octave higher. So 220, 440. And I'm going to try to turn that down. Most of the time it gets me where I want to be. Giving it some push. Uh, actually, this is the, the the bass drum. Sorry, this this is uh, true for the snare. What I said, uh, but giving it some push on the snare, bringing the harmonic down on the kick drum itself. I don't think I want to push it really. I'm gonna let it live and maybe turn down some 250 ish by like 9 dB with my microphone. I know it's usually uh, mid-range heavy in that area and I know around 2k my microphone also has a bump there that I want to get rid of because I don't want to sound like Pantera I want to kick a bass drum sound that is really round off I don't want too much attack that will be my starting point and if needed uh, I'm gonna put some high-end definition but I don't try to sound like the Black Album here. I don't want to have too much IN, but recording slash studio, usually you try to lift the IN a little bit. We'll see. This is a basic uh, compressor on. 
I think I'm going to go with the 160 because usually it's always a win with this one. I'm going to see where the threshold is going to sit. That's going to be, uh, depend on the, on the way I decide to gain up the channel. Probably not going to gain too high. I don't want the bass drum to destroy my main out. I'm probably going to be gain it just enough so I can get a decent volume in the ear, decent volume in the mix and leave it really subtle, you know? It's country, country music, usually the snare is more upfront than the bass drum. In rock and roll, it's the bass drum that is as upfront as the snare. Well, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna try to reinvent the wheel here. I'm just gonna go with the basic of what a country mix is, and this is my target. This is what I'm shooting for. I'm not an expert when it comes to country music. I spend my life in rock and roll, and I'm. I have new goal, new. <laughs> I'm learning. I'm learning to mix new style of music, even if I'm not that comfortable, and I'm just moving on with that. So 160 threshold is going to be set just so I can get one or two dB of compression and the gain won't be that high either. So gain it till I get maybe minus 21, minus 18, roughly. So just before it, it yellow, I'm going to ask the player to play loud. And this is where this is how I'm going to set up my gain. I'm going to ask him to play really loud and set up the gain to minus 8 max peak and I'm gonna ask him to play more normal less heavy on the bass drum and I'm gonna set the threshold to that so that I can get just a bit of compression on that 160 emulation here with that uh, do I want anything else I don't think so it's gonna go out to the main out so we're gonna we got all we're gonna do all the recording routing after this uh, for now, I just want to concentrate on the input itself. Snare top. Low cut. Uh, this time, 100 won't be enough. I will go probably around 180, 190. Boosting up somewhere around here. 3 to 6 dB. We'll start with 3. And the harmonic down. So 440-ish. Usually the same amount work well. We're going to start with that. Uh, when I don't have a snare bottom mic, I usually try to lift the eye end of the snare just a little bit, like around here. I could give it some, but uh, I probably won't. That's only going to pick up eye at. And this is not something that I want to amplify anyway. I'm going to have a hi-at mic. So I'm going to try to get a lot of the hit with that microphone and all the IN definition is going to come from the snare bottom mic after that. Okay, gate here. Uh, 1.5 to 1 expander. I just want to quiet a little bit the drum. I don't want to get it out. Here, that's just going to help me to get rid of the volume when he's not playing. So I won't have any bleed. After that, compression. Uh, I think I'm going to go no stressor and that's probably going to be set really high. I want the snare to be not dynamic at all. I want the snare to be, you know, I, I want to set it ballpark and I don't want it to move. So I'm going to try to go like for six to nine dB of compression pretty much all the time. Because even when he's going to do like those small train beat with the ghost note, I want the ghost note the less harder hit on the snare to compress by one db average so when he's gonna go like rock and roll style more dynamic in his playing i just want the compressor to hold on that and just to compress everything uh attack and release and output is going to be set again after i i see the compression uh once again i'm gonna ask for my drummer to play really hard snare hit and that's gonna be uh, around minus 15 this time not to be too quiet on the gain for the snare but this is just my target we'll see tomorrow morning 
Um, do I need anything else on that? Nope, this is a good starting point. Snare and bottom. Here we start to have fun. I'm going to put a low cut again. I'm basically going to put low cut on everything. Just so you know. Um, EQ wise, I need to hear it. I need to hear how is uh, it's gonna sound. It's on. Probably gonna try to do the same thing, maybe less mid range on the snare bottom. But here's the fun part. I don't know how many of you use side chaining key source in this case, but for my snare bottom, because it's really close to the bass drum, I don't want my bass drum hit to send energy into the microphone and make the gate open. So, to make sure that the bass drum doesn't send energy into my snare bottom mic and only, and my, my gate only gonna open when the snare is getting hit from the top, I'm going to set my source for my gate as the snare top. Turn the gate on. That way, the threshold here is going to be... Actually, the threshold is going gonna, is gonna to tell my gate to open when the snare top reach a certain level, not the volume of the microphone itself. That way, the, uh, the gate only going to open when I get signal from the snare top. I, I don't, sorry, I just feel like I can explain it badly. Uh, this is something that a lot of people do just to avoid bleeding. So, uh, actually, Glenn Fricker used to do this with a trigger. He used a drum trigger to open up his gate on snare top and snare bottom, which makes total sense so this is what i'm replicating here i'm not using a hold on i'm doing doing a thing here with the band Um, mm, mm, mm. sorry, doing a 12 thing at the same time at nine o'clock at night. <laughs> Welcome to the life of being a sound engineer. Okay, moving on. Uh, so yeah, basically my snare bottom gate is going to be triggered by the snare top. So every time the channel two, my snare top is getting hit, this is going to be used to open up the threshold. It's going to be sent at a threshold. It's going to open up my gate. Try it out. If you don't understand what I'm saying, try it out. Change the, on your snare top, on your snare bottom, set the key source to be your snare top and enjoy a really clean snare bottom. Uh, I'm going to leave that as is for now. Compression, I'm going to try to go the same thing. No stressor here. We'll see what happens with that. Once I get some signal going, I add, Probably not going to use much of it. I caught. There you go. Usually I don't put a lot of body from the hi-hat in the hi-hat mic. It just bleed everywhere anyway. So it's going to be there, but probably not going to use it. So I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Uh, wind compressor just so I can keep it under control. So if there's nothing else and uh, the hat hits are light, the volume is going to come up. If the drummer is going to go really hard, it's just going to compress and you won't hear it. This is what I want. Usually with the hat, absolutely no gate on that. We, try, we want to avoid that at all cost. You don't want the high hat to cut in between the hit. You want to let, want to let it ring. So that's going to be it. Uh, after that, Tom, great. Low cut, great. Gate, we're going to set the gate. I think I'm going to go with the drummer. And that's going to be pretty much minus 45 as a basic. Great, I like that. Like I said, I know my microphone. 
I'm using the Bayer Dynamic Clips, the TG58 and 57. Nothing to do with Shore SM57 and 58. Hold on. Again. Okay, moving on. So Tom's gonna be that, and I'm debating what should I use on the compressor side for them. I think I'm gonna go, hmm. Okay, I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna try the API emulation. I didn't try it much. I'm gonna try that. Threshold of zero dB, zero dB ratio, two to one-ish attack, fast release, 202, good. I'm gonna try that on my Tom and floor and we'll see what happened. So, okay, I'm gonna do the same thing for the floor. Uh, a hundred, it's usually I for a floor, a floor tom, but like I said, TV gig, 9 dB as a starting point, gate, drummer, 45. I could have just copy paste. That's it. Everything on, everything on. Good. Overhead, oh, those are going to be easy. Low cut, around 200. I usually uh, cut them at the frequency of the snare. I'll just leave it like that. No compression, no gay thing, no nothing. Why the EQ doesn't want to turn on? That took a long time. What's going on here? EQ didn't want to turn on. I'm not crazy. You guys saw that, right? Oh, well. Okay. Uh, moving on. Ride. Low cut. No gate. EQ. Usually a lot of mid. Because I'm micing it from under. So usually you have a lot of low mid in there. Uh, I can pretty much high cut it that high. Because I don't want, you know, that big whoosh. From the right, I just want to have the, the stick, the hit of the stick. And maybe some compression, wind compressor, like a lot. I don't want it to peak out. I just want to be there if there's not much going on, you know, a small hit. Otherwise, I want the compressor to just bring it down. Okay, now we're going to have fun. Bass, uh, compressor for sure. How do I want to do this? Hmm... Mm, 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 mm. Okay, let's go crazy. So warm. This is gonna add distortion to the gate to the bass. I'm gonna start with a mix of zero because I don't want to. I don't want the distortion to be hearable uh, if there's nothing. But I'm gonna go with a rock and roll bass. I'm gonna start with maybe just a little bit of distortion on the bass. It sounds weird by itself, but in the mix, distortion on bass is great. Uh, distortion, I'm going to EQ, low cut, a uh, hundred's going to be too high, I'm going to bring that down to around 80-ish, which is a E note, the usually the lowest one on a guitar, uh, but I start to cut my bass low end around there. On recording, it seems to work well, live, it seems a bit thin, but there's not much when you listen to a CD into a pair of reference speaker, there's not much going on in the low end. 
And this is what I'm trying to have. Maybe not a high cut. Maybe I will bring it down and use a, a low shelf instead. So I can not cut it, just lower it. We'll see. For now, I'm going to start with a low cut as I usually do. And judging with my hair tomorrow. Uh, compression. There we go. No question to ask here. Five. Five. On the 1176. Input at minus 18. Output set to be where I want my base to be sitting on the mix. Four to one ratio. Eight to one is usually hard. Uh, hard but I'm going to start with something like this. And it should be really close to what I'm going to use tomorrow. If I ever want to have more control over my bass, I can add a um, volume writer on it. But for now, I'm going to start with that. My friend Alex guitar, Alex, low cut. We're going to go 120. Sometimes I cut the eye frequencies on the guitar. I'm just going to go here 3 dB around 11K just to bring it down just a little bit if it's too bright. But that could probably go away tomorrow or not. We'll see. Um, no compression. Electric guitar are compressed. Clean guitar in country music usually are really compressed. I don't think I want to have more. If I ever need to have more, I'm going to put on a compressor. But usually, nope. Acoustic. Um, do I want a gate on that? Probably not. Do I want a source extractor? Yes, I will. Just, eh, actually, it's going to be mute when he's not going to play. No, nope. change my mind. Dynamic EQ. I'm going to leave it flat for now, but if there's any frequencies that is resonating a lot in the guitar, I'm going to turn it down with the dynamic EQ before I do anything else with it. After that, I'm going to have an EQ. I actually forget my low cut. We're going to go here 120-ish. Compressor. Hmm. LA-2A on guitar. Works fine for me. Gain. There we go. We'll start with that. That's going to be my basic for an acoustic guitar. And on this one, I know around 9K... I want to turn down the high frequencies because a piezo pickup is picking up a lot of high frequencies that are not there when you listen to a guitar from this far, you know. You hear the pick, but you know you don't hear the pick like it's scratching your ear. I just tried to get rid of that. We'll see what's going on with that tomorrow. Um, okay, moving on again. Violin, low cut. There's not much going on in the low end with a violin, so 160 is a good starting point. Uh, hmm, do I want to compress? Do I want to DS? Maybe I will try to put on a DSer with a range of zero for now. That way it's not going to be active. And I'm going to listen to the frequencies that could be annoying tomorrow. Get rid of that first, only when she's going to play them. This is why I'm using a DSer. So if the violin is playing in the low note, eh, I'm going to have all that air. But if uh, the violins go into notes that are aggressive in the IN, around like 8K, I can turn them down by 3 dB-ish, if needed, tomorrow. EQ-wise, I will need to listen to the violin. I did not work enough with uh, the violin to know how to how it sounds and what are the usual suspect frequencies that I need to cut down on this one. I'm just going to leave it as is. And I know I need the violin to be in your face. So I'm debating between the 1176 and the no stressor for that. I think I'm going to go 1176. Input minus 18. And 4 to 1. We'll see what's going on with that. Uh, I can do a copy paste. Copy, select destination, this one, 
Uh, I don't want the compressor. Oh, I was about to only copy the compressor. No, I want the full thing. So home. Uh, I don't want the tag customization, the config. I don't want to have that on. I want all the processing to follow. So I'm going to go from one to two. Copy. Confirm. Did that work? I think so. Yes, that worked. Okay. SM58 time. SM58 time nine. I'm just going to do a copy paste of that for my vocal. Uh, so do I want expander? No, I don't. I'm going to leave everything wide open. I'm just going to be gentle with the gain. DSer, depending on who's going to be there. I'm going to start with a, a preset that is usually... That is not affecting anything, so it's going to be on, but not affecting the signal. I'm going to copy-paste that across the board. EQ. Oh, low cut. There we go. 57-ish. 58-ish. Uh, We're going to start with something like that. Is usually how I end up with my 58. Uh, maybe a little bit of boost of vocal. Boost of IN in the vocal. Compression. No stressor for everybody. There you go. Uh, settings. Do I need to set something else? That's a good starting point. I'm just going to copy paste that all over the vocal. And that's going to be my starting point for that. Home tool. Copy. Please select destination copy. Yeah, right. I cannot copy on itself. So on this one gain tag custom config i don't want any of that i'm just gonna go copy confirm copy confirm times whatever uh all the vocals are done instrument I'm going to put low cut on, but uh, most of the time those will be electric guitar or acoustic guitar. So let's prepare just for fun to electric to acoustic. If my console can stop moving, I'm going to try this. That's going to be my electric. So 120 ish. No compressor, no nothing, no gate. Oh, maybe a gate just to get rid of the background noise. If needed, two to one. Okay, that's good. Uh, no compression on that. It's going to go here. I'm going to start with this and we're going to add some things for the uh, acoustics. I'm going to start with two electric. So one and two will be electric. Three and four will be preset as uh, acoustic or is it the other way around with the wireless that I have? You know what? It's going to be the other way around. I'm going to have two acoustic and okay, let me explain. Why I'm debating now is I have QLX wireless in a rack. And I have one GLXD. This is a pedal tuner uh, from Shure. The, you know, the, the it's basically a wireless receiver in a tuner. And you just give the pack to the artist, put that on his guitar, and he can mute himself with the, the, the tuner. So I know that's going to be set in wireless three. So that's going to be my acoustic guitar. Just because I don't have to plug it into an amp or a pedal board or anything. And if somebody show up with an electric guitar, I'm just going to put a 57 in front of his amp and call it a day. So, great. Thank you. 
dealing with the band live. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. So three is going to be my acoustic guitar. Acoustic guitar, I know I want to use a LA-2A. I like that on acoustic guitar. We'll see what happened with the gain. Um, because I won't have any kind of preamp or power amp, I will use the great sounding... Um, how does it called? The acoustic box effect. Hold on. Hold on. Let me take a look at it. Where is that? Is it in the standard or is it in the body res? There you go. I like that on acoustic guitar. It sounds good. I'm going to preset that 25. Just going to leave it as is. And for this one, I'm going to change the order of the block. I want the body res to be just after my gate. So it's going to be gate, body res, EQ, compression. Sounds about right. Uh, this, 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 and guess four is probably going to be another acoustic, but it's going to change, so I'm just going to leave it as is. Okay, now time to assign some bus out, and I will be ready for a sound check for tomorrow. Um, okay, let's go think about bus. Now, it's going to be a tricky one because I have uh, some wired input and some wireless input. I just need to figure that out. And by the way, all the gain is going to be set tomorrow, depending on the source. I've set the wireless because I know what they are, but uh, I'm going to wait for the sound check tomorrow to do this. Let's just go figure out the output and we're going to be good to go, at least for tomorrow. Um, bus out AS50A. Okay. My musician, my band, is going to be wired. So my first eight output should be by default patch one through eight for my whole band. So Alex left, right is going to be my guitar. Julie left and right. Donald left and right. P.O. my drummer. After that, I'm going to have my wireless stuff. So that's going to be my back vocal singer, my guess, because those are in the back of my rack, 1 through 16. And Vigo, the lead singer, I will put her pack next to me at the console, and she's going to go through local out 1 and 2. Just in case, I'm going to prepare another mix for a guest. And I'm going to leave 7 and 8 to be my output. That's good to go. Feel confident with that. Okay, now, the tricky part is bring all that stuff to a couple track of recording. I'm going to have two approach here. I'm going to record at the same time on the USB stick on my laptop as a multi-track. If something ever happened, I have a multi-track pre-gain, pre-everything. I'm going to have a multi-track that I can do whatever. And on the SD card is where I put my money. I want to have I need to think about it. I want to have a track. Uh, this is cool. This is another show. I want to set my SD card to be a track. And I think I can make it with a track. Maybe I will have to go to 16 to get all the stuff independent that I want. But uh, I need to figure out first how I can send my stuff out to the uh the track itself after that we'll see i need to think about it and i'm thinking about it live with you <laughs> i didn't plan that out so i know my drum is going to be a left right 
So can I use a bus? Can I just use a bus or do I want to use a main and send my drum into that main out? I have enough bus. I'm going to preset a single reverb, but I have like four, five, six, seven. Let's say that I'm keeping one bus for a special guest that I don't know is going to be there. I'm going to keep bus 10. That is not use. I'm going to call it uh, guest five or extra and not touching it. 11 and 12 are not used, so I can maybe use those for my recording. And I want at least two bus for vocal, just for fun uh, in the hair. I'm not gonna put vo uh, reverb on the drums and in the vocal, I want to record them dry and apply that in post-processing in Logic or whatever I'm gonna mix. So I think I can make 11. 12, 13, and 14. Or you know what? No, I'm going to use 13 to 15 as my recording out bus. So 13 is going to be my drum. Bass is going to go straight out with a user signal. My lead singer is going to go straight out with a... With a uh, yeah, she's going to go straight out, and I want to have my guest straight out. So, okay, let, one step at a time. Bus, I want to turn that bus into a actually a subgroup. And I want in that subgroup, I'm going to press send on fader here, selecting that bus. And just going to unmute my drum in that bus. You can see the send on fader on the screen here. I unmute the channel in there and we're going to take a look at what's going on here. Drum, all my drum are going in there. Great. That's good. We got that. After that. Okay. Well, actually let's patch it so I can visualize what's going on. Uh, w live rec. I want to keep it under. Actually, I'm just going to go none, 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 none. Okay. Bus. I want 13 to be a stereo bus. I will need to pan my stuff also in that stereo bus. I want to set up a user signal. Hold on. For my base, I think I can, uh, I can just ignore what's going on there and said, this one's not going to be my kick. This one's going to be my base. So user signal one. Uh, hold on. Okay. User signal one. Base DI. Okay. So I have drum, bass DI. I think I want to record my acoustic guitar first. So that's going to be, I'm going to change it after the fact, but that's going to be user signal two. Three and four will be a stereo electric guitar. So I'm going to set that up. I'm doing it backward. Uh, okay. This is going to be my acoustic guitar. This is going to be a stereo. And this is going to be a stereo source called guitar. Alex Oxbox. That's four. Okay. Where was that? Can I have now? Uh, I'm gonna, just going to go back to output W live. Can I? Hmm. No, actually, I cannot keep it under a track. I'm going to have to go 16. 
I'm gonna have to go 16 track. Um, now I'm debating should I just record everything multi track? Probably not. Okay. I'm gonna go two more user signal. And I'm gonna change them to be violin one and two. Uh, no, I need to set up a source user signal. It's gonna be violin one and two. Violin one. It's gonna be violin two. And for those of you who don't know, the user signal is gonna take the signal after the processing. So everything will be EQ'd and ready to rock. Um, okay, let's go again in output. After that, I can just patch. I can just be safe. I got all my band. I have drum, bass, acoustic Alex, his electric guitar, violin one and two. I can just patch my back vocal, lead vocal, guess and whatever electric guitar that I have and have everything independent and I wonder if I should take this those signal yeah it's just a vocal I'm just going to take those signal raw I'm not going to use user signal for that actually I'm going to chicken out here and say that I want to have, I don't want to use the user signal. I want to use the raw signal from the preamp. So I'm going to go bass DI, acoustic, electric guitar, violin one and two. I'm going to run out of signal here. Can I do? Okay. Well, my lead vocal is going to be in 16. Oops. Nope. Back vocal or I'm going to go in order. Alex, Julie, Donald, PO back vocal and two guests. Hmm. Really interesting. What should I do? Do I have... I don't have more than 32 output. And I have the recording capability to do that. I'm going to chicken out, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm just going to go full on one-to-one -one onto my... W live rec and I'm also going to track actually on my laptop. I will probably mix down some stuff, but I mean, at that point I can just record everything in logic dry too, in the remix after the fact. This is what I'm doing. Okay. Scrap all that. I'll go one to one. Uh, 22, do I need to have that? Uh, just let me check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yes, yes, yes. 24 is going to be my lead vocal. And after that, I have my local input. And my last one is this one. I have 32 channel with two empty one in the middle.
that will be the way to go. If I want to take a risk, I will do it on the USB. Yeah, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a risk on the USB. I'm going to have the W Live Play and my laptop recording both dry. And I'm going to build a mix with no vocal on my USB. One track will be lead. One track will be... Actually, I will have a stereo out. I will take a, a main out. We're going to build this together. Okay, let me show you. Uh, I'm going to leave 22 and 23 empty. USB recorder, that's going to be not, uh, matrix, main two, left and right. Three is going to be, uh, two, three is going to be Vero, the lead singer. And I'm going to use main, I'm going to use main four or main three and only send my vocal into it. Main three left. I'm not gonna pan the lead vocal and I'm gonna assign that right away. Okay, let's build some main out. Uh, I'm gonna use send on fader for that. I'm just gonna unmute everything in my main out, except vocal, uh, except vocal. So that's going to be my band, full on band playing in there. I'm going to have Vero on a separate track, my lead singer. She wants to, she wants to remix her vocal after the fact. And I totally get that. Um, and I'm going to have main three being all the vocal and I'm doing it sent on fader. So I'm just selecting the main in send on fader mode and unmuting stuff and that's going to create my mix for everything so main three is going to be all vocal all vocal i don't want my talk back to go in there and before i forget my instrument my guest instrument here is going to go out into main three so do i see them oh uh, main two Main two, okay, I can have an overview of that. Main one and two, you can see two square here in the bottom. Main one and three. And main one and two for my instrument. So this is basically my basic show file for tomorrow. All I need to do is now assign some um, USB out. So USB output is going to be one to one. Again, oh, not my local. I'm going to do this.
Hey, Craig. Thank you very much for pointing out that I probably just speak for 10 minutes with no live stream sound, right? <sighs> I'm a bad YouTuber. You just had the proof here. Guys, sorry for that. I hope I didn't unpatch that too long ago. I know it's a couple minutes, but I'm tired. That's just the proof of it. Thank you very much for watching. I really need to sleep. Uh, if you like that video, even with the mistake I just did, give this video a thumbs up. If you are not yet subscribed to the channel and you watch that far, dude, you should be subscribed. You're going to like what we're doing here. Until the next one, please take care of yourself. Thanks to Craig for pointing it out that I unpatched my live stream. This is why I need to sleep. Till the next one, please. Like I would do. Take care of yourself. And I'll see you guys later for another stream video or another random live stream, whatever happened. See ya!